it's amazing. The graphics, they're so real. The gameplay, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. It's a serious and true triumph of human engineering. What I'm seeing right now is honestly unbelievable. Can I open it yet? You're all probably thinking, Jonathan's lost his mind. We're talking about boxes today? But hear me out on this, because it's way more important than you'd think. As a kid, I would always see the game consoles in the display cases at the store, and unless the store had a demo kiosk set up, that was the only in-person look you were going to get of the console. So a lot of kids, including myself, went off of the pictures on the box in order to get ourselves hyped. There could be shots of gameplay, close-ups of the system, and in a few cases, really random stock photos. But to me, having the original box is just a part of the experience. It's like if you got it for Christmas or your birthday. You gotta have the box, not just for collecting purposes, but to complete the system itself. Unfortunately, getting a hold of these boxes is a challenge anymore since so many of them got thrown away. But for now, let's go through the ones that I have, and even a few that I don't, and see which ones are the best. Let's start at the beginning with the oldest box I have, the Atari 2600. This is the 4-switch version, but all the early 2600 boxes had this same layout of photos on the front. Look at everything that's going on here. There's the system, of course, but we've also got random shots of gameplay, and look at all these people who I assume are reacting to said gameplay. Really, they could be reacting to anything. Look at this kid, he's all like, WHOA! More games, more fun, you're right about that, since Atari games are pretty cheap anymore. The back just has more shots of gameplay from the included combat cartridge, but overall, I really like this design. The Vader 2600 would change the box to a more silver color, but the layout would remain largely the same. It's NES time. Now, the NES had a ton of different bundles and sets, but the one I have here is probably what most people remember, the action set. This is the 1989 version, as the previous one had the Grey Zapper. On this box, less is more as the NES is flying through space. No shots of gameplay here, just the system and controllers, but you know what, it works. It tells you what's included, and the NES really needs no introduction, so you know exactly what's inside. I love these blurbs typed up on the back, trying to build up the system as the most powerful piece of technology ever created. Of course that's no longer the case, but they sure are fun to read. Check out this family playing Super Mario Bros. That is the most 80s wardrobe I've ever seen, and how are they doing two players at once? Slow down there, Jimmy, you gotta wait for your brother to die first! The whole space theme would continue across all the versions of the NES, including the later top loader design, and the action set would be redesigned in 1990, but it was a subtle change and the space background remained. Sega Master System. Yeah, this is boring. All the Master System boxes and even the games had this boring white grid layout to them. I guess it was supposed to make the system look more sophisticated than the NES, but it really backfired on them and it just looks boring. Let's talk about the Sega Master System 2. This isn't much better. It's still pretty bland overall, but at least the European version has Sonic on it. The Super Nintendo, my first game console, and what I have here is the North American launch bundle that came with Super Mario World. For the front of the box, less is more as it just has the system itself and the included accessories, but that's all you need. The back is just as simplistic, but the write-ups on here are amazing. You can pause here if you'd like to read them, but they succeed at getting you pumped up to get home and play some Super Mario World already. Imagine how hyped you'd be back in 1991 to play this, and I still get a similar level of excitement playing Super Mario World to this day. Still one of my favorite games of all time. Over the course of the Super Nintendo's life, there were several bundles with different artwork. Some of my favorites are the Donkey Kong Country bundle with its jungle background, Killer Instinct for those awesome mid-90s CGI renders, and of course the Super Nintendo Junior which uses Super Mario RPG characters on it. I don't have any boxes for my Genesis stuff, but they all kind of followed this black grid pattern, like an inverse of the Master System boxes. Pretty slick, I will admit, but with the release of the Model 2 Genesis, they became a bit more bland. The Sega CD box, though, just looks like you're opening up a portal to an alternate dimension. I love it. Sega kinda gave up with the Saturn box, though. Just a plain white background. It's a shame, really. Now Nintendo, on the other hand, threw everything they had into the Nintendo 64. This box practically screamed to kids from the shelf, Hey, I'm the best one. I have Mario 64. Nothing else matters. I did always love this render of Mario. I wish they'd bring this art style back. The front just has the console and the atomic purple controller, but just look at all the games on the back. This really shows off what a phenomenal first-party lineup the 64 had. What a great design. As the N64 was revised and released in other colors, the boxes just weren't as captivating. Just a white background, but the colors do make up for it, I guess. The Sony PlayStation. What is this? 
We all know what the PS1 looks like now, but back then, this gives you nothing to go off of. I guess this one's better, since it has a vague outline of the console in the background, but yeah, this one's pretty bland. The PS2 box, however, is arguably worse. Just the color blue with the logo, that's it. The PS2 Slim fixed this by having an actual photo of the console on it, but it's back to being a white box, so I'm inclined to like the blue box more. What's happening? The GameCube didn't do much better, just a photo of the system with a white background. Come on guys, we can do better than this. I want some awesome artwork of the GameCube flying through space with a family hyped out of their minds as random shots of gameplay come flying through the asteroid belt, but no, we get a white box. <sighs> and speaking of a white box, the Wii. I guess Nintendo felt less is more in this case, but there is nothing to this box. Just the system and the Wii remote. Maybe the back is better. Nope. Man, they better be glad the marketing campaign and word of mouth worked so well for this system, because if I saw this box at the store with no prior knowledge, I'd probably think nothing of it. I never had an Xbox 360, but Microsoft followed this path as well, just having one solid color and a stock photo or two of the console. I guess it gets the job done, but this isn't something I would proudly display on my shelf. Now what did Sony do? Spider-Man font. Yeah, the original PlayStation 3 is kind of infamous now for its giant enemy crabs and yellow light of death, but man, does the original logo look cool. You've got Sony here showing off the PS3 like it's a brand new car. There's a few shots of gameplay on the back, but there's so much text it's barely noticeable. You know what though? I like this better than the 360 and Wii boxes. I think they had something going here. I can't wait to see what they do with the next version of the PS3. Well, that's disappointing. The PS3 Slim, from a reliability standpoint, is an improvement over the original system, but this box is a huge step down. Well, I guess I got my stock photo of the excited family there, so yay. But there's so much text here and the art is just really uninspired. There's one more model of the PS3, so is that one better? Eh, kind of. It's the same issue where it's just a boring photo of the system, but I do like the blue better than the white. Speaking of blue, the PS4 boxes followed this same pattern for all three models. They're fine, I guess, but nothing is jumping out at me here. There are no characters on the box from some of the PS4 exclusive games. How cool would it be to have Kratos on the front here, or Spider-Man? Oh, wait. The Xbox One did the same kind of design, but instead of the color blue, we have green. So much green you'd think it was good for the environment, or black for the One X. And then there's the One S with its white background, come on guys! Unless it's a special bundle that comes with a game anymore, console manufacturers seem perfectly happy to slap a photo of the system on a single color and just call it a day. I would really like this to change soon. Now I can't forget about the Wii U, which initially started off in a similar way. Just a photo of the system and gamepad on a blue background. But as the system went on, we got different bundles that weren't limited edition. They effectively replaced the launch bundle. I have this new Super Mario Bros. U edition, and this is really creative. With each bundle, the U on the other side would change its appearance, and I really appreciate that detail. I guess I just really like the Wii U. Can you guys tell? Maybe a little too much. Finally, the Nintendo Switch. This system got off to a promising start with this box. It's like a collage of people enjoying the system and all the different ways you can play it. No shots of gameplay, really, but hey, this is an improvement over the past three generations. And then they had to redesign it, so it's just a picture of the system over a single color background. Come on, guys, I thought we were better than this. I do have to admit that the red does make it look more noticeable on store shelves, but it's so... boring. And the Switch Lite does the same thing except with a white background, so... Ugh. Well, we've reached the present day as far as consoles go. The retro stuff is awesome, whereas the modern consoles suffered a lot in creativity. Real quick, let's do a lightning round of all my Nintendo handhelds. This is awesome. Has that 80s futuristic kind of vibe, and it makes it look like playing Game Boy will make the world explode. A bit more simplistic, but I love the shots of gameplay on it, and it's in color, dang it! Let's just put text showing you what our system can do instead of putting artwork all over it. People will love it. It's a picture of the console in front of a single color background. Need I say more? But this one has a backlit screen, which means it's automatically better. Why bother having a picture of the console when you can look right at the exact one you're buying? Our new system has a touch screen. Did we ever mention that? Also, it's another white background, which is my mortal nemesis. Somebody thought this was a good idea. This accurately shows how tiny the original 3DS is. Special editions or not, this is kind of an improvement. Well, this is definitely better than having a white background, and I do like the gradient effect going on in the background here, but that's about it, really. Oh, so we're pressing our faces up to the systems again. I can actually count the pixels of the 3DS screen. And those are all the console boxes that I have to show you here today. As you can see, they're kind of a lost art since not a lot of effort gets put into the design of them anymore. Hopefully the PS5 and Series X prove me wrong there, but until then, at least we can always look back at the retro stuff. And I think that should about do it for this episode of Retro Rampant. Oh yeah, I forgot about the Nomad!
Now as you can see, the box for the Nomad showcases the most noteworthy feature of the system. It's a brick.